Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Your Tech Today. In this video, we are going to do the camera review of the Lenovo Vive K4 Note. Let's go over the hardware specs. This is a 13 megapixel camera on the rear. It has five element lens and it is a 16 by nine uh, ratio sensor. And on the front, we have a five megapixel camera and it is uh, capable of recording video up to 720p. It's a four element lens. The back camera can shoot up to 1080p and it has an aperture of f2.2. Now let's go through the camera UI. So the camera app is quite basic, I would say. And let me keep an object here just to shoot. So this is the shutter button and it is in photo mode right now. So you press the shutter is instant. And on top of that, there is a button for going into video mode. And once you press that, it starts recording video. The audio recorded in the videos is also quite clear. You can pause the audio, uh, video and then resume it. Also, there is no autofocus during video recording and you have to manually tap the uh, screen for focusing. So on this side on the bottom, you can see there is a flash button and that is for changing the flash mode. This is always on, this is flash off and this is auto mode. Over here, you can use it to switch to the front camera. And there is an HDR button over here, which toggles HDR on and off. So on the bottom over here, you see the settings button. And when you go into that, you have two more modes, which is the panorama and the effects mode. When you press the effects mode, you, you get these various effects, which you can see in real time, what the effect looks like. So this is also nice. And panorama is pretty self-explanatory that you can take panorama pictures. And over here you see another settings button. When you press this, you go into the settings of the camera. So here is the aspect ratio. It is in 16 by 9, 4 by 3 and 1 is to 1. This is the photo resolution. Snap mode is normal touch when you touch the screen and timer and it has smile detection also. And then there is the white balance setting and the ISO, the ISO goes up to 1600. But I would suggest you do not shoot at 1600 because the pictures will be very noisy. And there is an inter, in a inbuilt leveler meter also, which can show you whether your pictures are leveled or not. And again, guidelines are also there. Then we press this, you go into the video settings and there is only one setting over here, which is the resolution and full HD, HD and standard resolution is what it shoots in. And the last is the camera settings again and the storage location and the location info that is the geotagging, the sound of the uh, shutter button and volume button whether what the volume button should do, zoom or capture. So when you switch over to the selfie mode there is another settings panel over here and in which you have the fill light which in which when you click the picture it brightens the screen to increase the light on your face in dark situations and there is a snap mode where there is timer and there is hand signs and all these are a little difficult to detect and all that but you can try it out and there is auto selfie and that is in three seconds after it detects your face it will take the photo and there is photo mirror also and there is a beauty mode over here, which adds a skin softening effect to your pictures. Now let's quickly go through some of the samples that I had taken with this camera. So in this pic, I'm on my terrace and I've taken a landscape shot from there of these buildings. And there is quite a lot of detail. The pictures are quite sharp and uh, the lens used is quite nice. This is a selfie. I'm facing the sun in this photo and it has come out pretty well. In this one, the sun is on my right hand side, sorry, the left hand side and a little bit of shadows are there. This is a close up and you can feel the bokeh effect also, how much is there with an f2.2. It's a little lesser than an f2.0 or f1.8 lens. Again the same picture, again a landscape photo, 
this was during the evening time and not uh, bright sunlight so I think it performed pretty well in this pic you can see again the sharpness is quite good you can see the clothes and everything quite nicely this is also a very nice pic where there are there are dark scenes over here in the trees and there is bright sunlight over here and it has handled the exposure quite well it's not great great but for this uh, price range it's quite a good camera because of a bird flying so this was to check the shutter speed and it caught the bird quite nicely but there is a lot of noise in the sky area this is the nighttime photos nighttime is where this camera lacks and I think any cell phone camera will lack just because of the sensor size this is a nighttime selfie it's not very dark over here as you know on the roadside of the shops and everything this is inside a restaurant so restaurant lighting it was quite okay this is with the flash of the sofa in the restaurant and the same pic without the flash So this is the salt and pepper shaker. So in the, this picture, I have focused on this one, and this should be a little blurred. So it has focused quite nicely on the nearby object. So you can take some good macro shots. And in this picture, the focus is on the second object. These are some of the filters which I have applied and taken the same pic. Again, one of the filters. Again, a filter. This is without the filter. This is night time, same shot on the terrace of those buildings and you can see hardly anything is visible. This is with the flash. Quite okay, I would say. The flash is not very powerful, but it is all right. A macro shot with the flash. This is an indoor lighting condition, the front facing camera. This is in bright sunlight and the traffic is actually moving but the shutter speed is so nice that it has frozen the, like this auto over here quite nicely. So there is no blurriness anywhere. So in good sunlight it is quite a nice camera. Again over here, it's been frozen nicely and you can read the number plate also nicely done same so this is a close-up of a plant again macro shot is quite nice you can see the focus is over here on these two leaves the rest everything is blurred out so that is a nice bokeh effect so this is another indoor shot with the light coming from the window and I think it is quite nice. Just for reference, I have put the same pic with my Note 4 also. And you can see the difference. Yes, the details in Note 4 is much more, I would say. But you can't really compare the two because the price difference is too huge. So now I'll be showing you these video samples of various uh, light conditions and at different resolutions and we will come back after that. Also you can check the sunlight legibility of the screen. This is full HD mounted on a tripod. We will just pan. It's not too sunny, it's not too dark also, it's about 6 p.m. This is full HD handheld from the rear camera. Let's zoom in and see how the quality is. This is 3x zoom handheld. Audio is also through the camera phone itself. 
This is the front facing camera video. So I'm facing the sun right now. And now the sun is going to be behind me. So I think it's adjusting pretty well. Let's do a walking test and see how it is facing the sun. So it's not auto focusing. Now I'm going to tap on this, then it will auto focus. So you can get an idea about the bokeh effect also. of this camera again it's not adjusting i'll tap and then it focuses the nighttime video quality in traffic this is the nighttime video quality mounted on a tripod Nighttime video with the flash on. Again, the flash reach is not much. And I think there will be some frame drops also. But I think up to 10 feet or something, 8 feet, it is lit. Okay, okay. This is the sunlight legibility test of the Vibe K4 Note. It's somewhere in the evening right now, so the sun is not very bright, but you can see how it is. The screen brightness is at maximum. Sun is behind me now. I think it should do pretty well in bright sunlight also. And it has a special mode in which it bumps up the brightness even more when it detects the sunlight is too much. So now I would come to the final verdict as you have seen the video samples and the picture samples I would say the camera is quite good for the price uh, the other camera that I can compare it to is the Coolpad Note 3 and I think this is a little better than that and uh, it's a very good camera for daily use and for 12,000 rupees in this price range this is the best camera that you can get in a phone so you can uh, confidently buy this phone for the camera there will be no issues only problem with it is the night time it lacks in quality and the noise levels are too high and there is no auto mode that also is a con and uh, rest everything seems to be all right you can take nice selfies with it i've seen in good light the selfies are quite nice and the front facing camera angle is also more than what uh, we can see in the vive x3 so that is also a good thing that it's a wide front facing camera so you can fit in a big group also. So guys this completes the camera review of the Vibe K4 Note. If you have any questions leave them in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like and share the video. And if you want to buy this phone I'll leave a link in the description. Please use that. It really helps the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.